Hi, I'm John Schreiber. For over 17 seasons, the New Jersey Performing Arts Center has been the state's premier home for both world-class and community-based performances. We pride ourselves on presenting something for everyone. That's why we're very proud to partner with the Caucus Educational Corporation to produce one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato at NJPAC. This special series features some of the very best talent New Jersey has produced. We're pleased to welcome them and you to the Arts Center. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJPAC has been provided by the law firm of Gibbons PC, Prudential Financials Global Communications Department, PSENG, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. The New Jersey Education Association, working for great public schools for every child. The Fidelco Group, Cone Resnick, and by New Jersey Natural Gas, proud to support education in our communities. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. You see, you go right part. into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. I'm Steve Adubato. More importantly, we are here at the New Jersey, the legendary New Jersey Performing Arts Center. For one-on-one, -on -one, I want to introduce you to Mark Nather. He is an entertainer, a cabaret and concert performer, and a ranger. A little bit later on, he'll be performing... Amos Behaven. By the way, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Waterloo, Iowa. I, um, I don't know if you can tell I'm Jewish, and Iowa is our nation's pork state for every human being in, in, in is Iowa, that right? there are 3.4 <laughs> pigs. This is an actual statistic that they have on postcards and, and coffee they mugs. They do not. Yes, and as I said, I'm Jewish. <laughs> That's really all I want to say about it. That's it was it. a horrible childhood. I came here when I was 17. I couldn't wait to get You there. came to New York? Came to Always New York. Always wanted to come oh, to New I York? Oh, I forget. Here is not New York, is it? Oh, wait, it's Newark, New Jersey. Okay, it's almost uh, Come on, this is a lot closer than Iowa. Come on. <laughs> Did you always want to go to New York? Oh, yeah. Because? The minute I came out of the womb, I just... How'd you know? You know, I just never fit in in Iowa. Does that shock you? It just, I was never... It, first of all, I grew up in a farming community, or it's a, it's a factory town surrounded by farming communities, mainly pig farms. Pig farms? Yeah. I grew and up about eight blocks from here in Newark, New Jersey. Pig farms a lot of there. Trust also. me, no farms. No pigs. All concrete. No it's well, called Brick City for a reason. But that was my dream, Brick City. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not big on, like, grass. and I like <laughs> to look at it in pictures. Right. So when you came to New York looking for work. Yeah, of course. Of found course. any right away or what? Uh, yeah, actually, I got work very, very quickly because I, I had already been working. I started playing piano when I was four. I had my first job when I was 10. And by the time I got to New York, I had been working in the business for seven years. Go back. Four. Piano. Because? Because my sister played the piano, and I was intrigued, and I wanted to do that. And um, No one pushing? No, 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 no. If they had pushed, I wouldn't have done it. It was but you. It was me. I just wanted to, you know? It w and, and I would see, you know, in, the, the big thing to do at that time was to watch Ed Sullivan on Sunday night and the Carol Burnett show. And I would see these great variety shows. And I would see these people come out and dazzle, you know, Danny Kaye and, and Edie Gourmet performers. and Juliet, real performers. And I wanted to be that. And um, I, when I want to do something, I do it. It's interesting. We were talking right before we got on the air, and I said the word cabaret. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it says, you know, this guy's talented. He's with a cabaret and concert performer and arranger. Just the term cabaret means different things to different people. What does it mean to you? Well, to me, it means a, a, a life's work. I mean, I've, I, I, I've, my first job when I was 10 was playing in a saloon in Cedar Falls, mm -hmm. Iowa, playing piano and singing in a saloon. And um, that was a sort of cabaret. We had saloon girls. Now, this wasn't the 1860s, you know. It was, it was Iowa's idea of a theme park. Right. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, but it was a cabaret show of sorts, of you know. Of sorts. It's, it, cabaret shows are, cabaret is the last entrepreneurial art form. Entrepreneurial art form. We, you... we write our shows. We direct our own shows. We sing. We do the, we do the music. We, we produce it. We do the whole thing. We 
very rarely will have somebody else involved. And that's what makes it so personal. And I think that the real definition of a cabaret show is that it's a highly personal exploration of music. It's always music-based. Talk about right now, the cabaret show. Talk about what's happening right now in your world. In my world, in my yeah. life. Talk about your well, life. Well, I have several, you know, um, for example, I'm gonna be at NJ Pack here with KT Sullivan. Uh, and we'll be doing a, a, an exploration of the music of Cole Porter that we put together for the Algonquin. We used to play the Algonquin together annually. What a room. Yeah, it was great, the Oak Room at the Algonquin. And um, so we will be doing that here. I also have a show called I'm a Stranger Here Myself. That, I'm a Stranger Here Myself. Yeah, and it began as a cabaret show in a 200-seat cabaret right. theater in um, Australia. It was nominated for their, their version of a Tony Award. And then I brought it to New York and did it at 54 Below. And that is the Studio 54. That's the right. new nightclub underneath Studio yes. 54, which is gorgeous, great club. And then from there, because the New York Times said this should really be in a theater, that show was, I had an off-Broadway run for six weeks at the York Theater. So cabaret, theater, I don't know. They can mm. intertwine, you know? But um, so I'm in the process of touring that show and, uh, and lots of other stuff. I'm always busy. Yeah, again, the story behind I'm a stranger here myself, to what degree of is, is it personal? It's, um, it's the, 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 the point of departure of I'm a stranger here myself is the Weimar Republic. The, the, when we think of the movie Cabaret, when mm. we think of Cabaret, a lot of people think of the movie Cabaret, that took place during the Weimar Republic, the period between World War I and World War II in Germany. And those cabaret songs were, were edgy and dangerous and exciting and sexy. And I take those songs to explore the people who wrote them. It's personal because I am the child of immigrants. Mm. All of the people who wrote those songs were either Jews or gays. All of them. I'm both. So it, it plays very deeply into my psyche. And you, these songs that these people were writing were so... This was the time when Hitler was just coming to power. And there was so much fear in Germany, but not from these people. These people were saying it exactly... It, it was sort of those German cabarets... Afraid. They weren't afraid of anything. Those German cabarets were sort of the Saturday Night Live or the Daily Show of Germany of that time. They were doing things in entertainment that were calling attention to, to the, the political upheaval. And um, that rings very, very mm. close to me. You know, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking about the heck was it like for you in Iowa? You went all the way back. <laughs> well, that's what I'm all saying. all the way back. I'm like, who'd you hang out with, man? Well, I had one friend. His name was Danny Katz. He was the other Jew. <laughs> <laughs> and there were no Italian kids? There were. Well, there must have been Italians. Yeah, but you, I didn't yeah, know yeah, any. No, trust I mean, me. everybody was named Smith and I got Jones. You. And, I got you. And Nothing lots wrong with Smith Germans. and Jones. Lots but... of Germans. That's why my family ended up there. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so your friend's name was? Danny Katz. And you got together. Did you, did you write stuff together? Did you? Danny and I, no, not really. Not really. Danny was more, uh, I was out there doing it, and Danny was sort of like promoting me. He was promoting sort of, you? Yeah, well, listen. He was a businessman. He was a Jew. <laughs> I, I wasn't that kind of Jew. He was that kind of Jew. <laughs> so there are two different kinds of Jews? Or? There are two different kinds of Jews. The talented ones, and then the ones who promote. I love it. Love it. Do you love the business part of the business? No. I hate the business part of the business. You really do. But you know what? It's essential. It's how I earn my living. And it's how I've earned my living now for 41 years. So I, uh, yeah, I, 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 but it's a necessary evil. I just want to create, you know? I just want to take the, the, one of the beautiful things about Cabaret is you take a song mm. that you've always loved and you can shape it, mold it, do anything you want with it. There are no restrictions. You know, you can take, in our Cole Porter show, for example, that we're going to be doing at NJ Pack, or that we will have done by the time this is seen, I don't know. Sure, it'll be seen repeatedly, but... So anyway, the, in that show, yeah, 
we take songs, for instance, just one of those things. It was just one of those things. This is how it was written. Just one of those fabulous things. One of the, we do it very slowly and dangerously as two lovers saying goodbye to each other for the last time. Mm. With all of that regret and all of that anger and all of that relief. And so you can shape and mold these songs, you know, and that's, that's a great part of the, that's why I love what I do. You love the craft and the art. I do. Business you gotta deal with. I do. Um, sort of like public television. Uh, <laughs> Mark Nadler is an extraordinary entertainer, cabaret and concert performer and arranger, and he's about to uh, perform Ain't Misbehaving. I am going to. Thank you. It's my great pleasure, Steve. And we Thank love having you. you part of the family here at NJ Pack. Thank you. It's Thanks an honor. so much. Looking forward to hearing you. Thanks. Let's go do it. No one to walk with, I'm all by myself. No one to talk with, but I'm happy on the shelf. I ain't misbehaving, I'm saving my love for you. I know for certain the one that I love, I'm through with flirting, it's just you. I'm thinking of, I ain't misbehaving, I'm saving my love for you. I'm like Jack Horner in my corner. I don't go nowhere, what do I care? Your kisses are worth waiting for. Believe me, I don't go out late, I've nowhere to go. I'm home about eight, just me and my radio ain't misbehaving. I'm saving my love for you. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org, visit us online at oneonone.org, or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD. That's right, 60 years on the stage. Paquito de Rivera, musician, composer, author, band leader, 11 Grammys. Now, I just said he's the only artist to win both uh, classical and jazz in those categories. And you said, no, the other guy was? Winton, Winton did it before. Winton Marsalis. Winton Marsalis, yeah. That guy, huh? <laughs> that guy. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, very good, you know, traveling all the time. My life is a jet lag, but I am happy that I do what I, you know, what I like to do. Play music and writing and, and meeting people like you. Yeah. So it's fun. You met us about 10, 12 years ago uh, when we did one-on-one -on -one at uh, another network before we came to public television. and. You, you, we loved you then, and we're great now. You, my, we my colleague over at WNET, Rafael P. Roman. Rafael P. Roman, he owes me money. Where's him? He does, right? <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah, we have that in common. He's bad that way. <laughs> Tell folks where you grew up. I grew up in, in very close to the Tropicana uh, Cabaret. 
like 10 blocks from Trop Tropicana Cabaret. My father was a classical saxophone player. Where? Uh, in, in, in Cuba. Right. And a uh, neighborhood called Marianao. And uh, I, I grew up in that cabaret, you know, surrounded by, by dancers and journalists and photographers and musicians. When did you know music would be your life, a big part of your life? I think from the very beginning, because my father retired from the army. He never liked to be in the army. So he retired from the army and practiced, practiced his saxophone 26 hours a day. 26? 26, 26 <laughs> sometimes 27. <laughs> So they say that I, there is a, some picture of, of me playing a plastic saxophone next to him when I was like two or three years old. So I, I, I guess I, I got no choice. The I first time it. you got paid to do this, do you remember? Well, actually, my father got, got, got paid. <laughs> <laughs> Other than your father, the first but, time. But the, the first time that I, I, I played in public was when I was six years old, 1954. That means that next year, I am going to, to, uh, to count 60 years on the 60 stage. Years. 60. 60 years on the stage. And some, some people ask me, are you going to retire? And I had this, this, the same answer that Celia Cruz had. Say, retiring from what? Yeah. From having fun? Yeah, talk about that. Why would you retire? Yeah, retire to, to, to what? Anyway, in the, in the case of Celia Cruz, he retired to sing in the shower. <laughs> it's better to sing on the stage and they, you get paid. You know? Yeah, because you love what you do, always have. And the passion for what you do, you've never lost. No, it, sometimes you feel tired, you know, because all, all the time traveling and jet, jet lagging. It's, yes, uh, jet lagging. <laughs> yes. Jet lagging. But the, the, uh, the, uh, the nightmare st uh, stops when you go to the stage. You know, the nightmare of the traveling and all, the, all those, that, that struggling and all that in, the, in hotels that they don't have your, your, your room ready <laughs> and the, the, uh, the uh, flying uh, that are delayed. All that nightmare stops when the music starts. Because? Because the music is the best cure for anything, mm. to forget everything. You know, music is, uh, I, will, I, will, I will be always thankful to my father for giving me this wonderful prof uh, profession. He gave it to you? Yes. Since I was very small, he asked me, you want to be a musician? OK, I will teach you how to play the instrument, but you have to do it right. And uh, he told me how to play the saxophone, and <laughs> he is still trying to learn. Mm. And then he gave me a clarinet, and uh, I, I, had a, I have had, I am having a beautiful life of what I'm doing. He introduced me to the beautiful uh, world of literature also. So I... I yeah, I, the writing, I, it's interesting. You've written a, f a couple books, no? Uh, three books. Yeah. The first, the first one uh, is called My Sax Life. Your Sax Life. My uh, Sax Life. I am a sax maniac. You are a sax <laughs> maniac, aren't you? And by the way, while you're talking about this, um, multiple books, but I want you to talk to me about some of the people you met along the way, Paquito. Dizzy Gillespie. Oh, this he was uh, a permanent force, an inspiration in my career. Since I was, uh, I don't know, thir 12, 13 years old, listening to his playing and his jokes and his wonderful personality. And he was one of the most helpful people in uh, building my career in this country when I arrived here. In so hold, wait a minute. You listen to him as, as a 12-year-old. Oh, yeah. And then you meet him as a... I meet him in the most crazy way in the world. There was a, a, a boat, a big ship called the, the, uh, the, the Daphne, who stopped in Havana and nobody knew anything. So somebody picked him up in the, uh, in the, in the pier and took him to my house. Why? Because my house was a kind of a center of jazz in Havana. In really? Days. Yeah. So I was not there. And he left a message in, in Spanglish, said, Paquito, we have been looking for you. Donde estabas? Dizzy Gillespie. And I thought that was a joke. Right. Then I went to the, to the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, in, uh, to the, in the corner, they have a grocery store. And then the guy said, did you see the note? I thought it was a joke. I said, a note? What note? I said, there was a, a black guy, a chubby black guy, <laughs> dressed like Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, oh he my God, that is DC Gillespie. Gillespie. <laughs> so the guy said, DC who? Said, it doesn't matter. And you met him? 
finally, I met him because uh, they, they organized like a jam session with the American and Cuban musician in a, in a former Hilton Hotel. Wow. And that was the beginning of the, of the end. That was the beginning of a wonderful friendship. Wow. You met some amazing people. Oh, so many wonderful. I have the opportunity to meet every day that happened to me. I, I, every day. That meet interesting people. Do you think, I know this sounds like a, um, a corny question, but I'll ask it anyway. Do you think you were put here to do what you do? I think so. I remember You seeing... couldn't have been an insurance salesman? <laughs> well, if you give me some extra box there, I will do it. If you had to pay the bills, you do what you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love doing this. And uh, I always I remember a phrase that the great Benny Goodman said when he received a Grammy Award. And he say, it's incredible that they are giving me an award for doing what I love to do the most, playing the clarinet. So those 11 Grammys, you know, it's nice to have people say that about you. Is that a big deal to you? Yes and no. Always I am thankful, you know, when, when I receive a, a, an award because that means that somebody is paying attention to what you do. But I don't work for, for awards. My best awards are the opportunity to play with people like Celia Cruz and Yo-Yo Ma and Cachao and Bebo Valdez and Lizzie Gillespie. Those are my real awards. And to meet young people that make good music, so those so are go, the real go back, awards. Go back, because you said Yo-Yo Ma. And that is not someone that I would think that you would mention in the same sentence as Celia Cruz or uh, Dizzy Gillespie, because it's a very different or genre. Or Tito Puente, yeah. Or Tito Puente. Yeah. So here's my question. What does that fit in? My father was a very, always my father, my father was a very Ellingtonian person in the sense that Elling, the great Duke Ellington say there is only two kinds of music, good music and the other stuff. So uh, at home, the old man used to play back to back, uh, Benny Goodman at Carnegie Hall he, with, and his swing orchestra, and Benny Goodman playing the Mozart concerto for clarinet. I didn't know the, the Mozart. Hold on. The Mozart concerto. Mozart for concerto, clarinet. back to back. He, back to back. He recorded that piece, and <clears throat> I, I grew up listening to music, and I didn't know the difference between I don't know. Uh, Mario Lanza and the Machito Orchestra. And we used to Mario Lanza, and how about Enrico Caruso? Oh, well, that, that, that happened before, but yes. Yeah, it's my but grandmother, it, yeah. I don't want to go there. But, so you're saying it broke down all the barriers of music? It's just music. It's just music. You, you, you have to do uh, adjustment, you know, minor, minor or, or major adjustment of the different styles of music that you play. You don't play the same way Armstrong, that the, the way you play Ornette Coleman. You don't play the same way the, the, the music of Stavinsky than the music of, of, uh, of Bach. Mm. But it's all music. You, you have to adapt to, to, to the style. And working with Yo-Yo Ma was, mm. was one of the, the highlights of my career. Speaking of highlights, we're about to hear you perform what song? To Brenda with Love. To Brenda with Love. And Brenda is, an, is who? Brenda is my wife. She, she forced me to play this tune <laughs> on TV. And, and for that, I, I have with me a very, very special person, which is a uh, my very young and talented pianist, Alex Brown. Alex is playing with you. By the way, your wife said you have to play this song on public television. <laughs> you must. You must play this on PBS. I, you must play that and, and, uh, and mention my name. I'm going to do it again. With uh, To Brenda With Love, right? Uh -huh. And uh, we very much appreciate and love your work for 60 years. Congratulations on 60 years on the stage, uh, Paquito de Rivera. Thank you so much. Thank you for Looking having me here. You. It's an honor, as always. Thank you.
One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence, and by the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, in cooperation with NJTV and 13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been provided by the law firm of Gibbons PC, Prudential Financials Global Communications Department, PSENG, the New Jersey Education Association, the Fidelco Group, Cone Resnick, and by New Jersey Natural Gas. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger and NJ.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.